Hello everyone. Let's suppose you have a patient with a fever and you test them for COVID and the test comes back positive. How can you be sure that it's really COVID that is the cause of their symptoms? This question is more important than ever and it's so easy to get the answer wrong. A year ago or two years ago, most people who tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 actually had the typical symptoms of COVID of varying severity. Now, sure, there were some mild infections, there were asymptomatic infections, especially among kids and young adults, but they were nowhere near as common as they are today. And we still test for COVID left and right. You cannot step foot in an emergency department or a hospital ward with any sort of complaint without being tested for COVID first. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with testing. It's just that when you start with a positive test, it's so easy to attribute any kind of symptom to COVID, especially if the patient presents with something vague and unspecific like uh, chest discomfort, a fever with no localizing symptoms or a sore throat, anything. All of these, can be symptoms of COVID. But I don't have to tell you that there are far more dangerous and urgent conditions that can present in a very similar way. In other words, we as clinicians are always in danger of the so-called premature closure. In practice, we still occasionally see patients with the typical symptoms of severe COVID with COVID pneumonia and everything, but we also see a lot of patients with all sorts of infectious and non-infectious conditions that have absolutely nothing to do with COVID, only they happen to test positive for SARS-CoV-2, but this infection is not the cause, or at least it's not the main cause of their symptoms. So how can you tell the difference? Well, the only way is to know the typical clinical presentation of COVID very well. Now, I'm sure that you already have a lot of experience with COVID, but still I would like to point out a few key points that I believe will help you a lot in noticing when something is not quite right. If your patient's breathlessness, uh, tightness in the chest, rapid breathing or low O2 saturation are really caused by COVID, well then, you should see the typical signs of COVID pneumonia on chest x-ray. I already covered this in a separate video on pneumonia, but basically you should see bilateral, more or less symmetrical, diffuse interstitial infiltrates with some consolidation, most pronounced in the lower lobes and on the periphery, while the upper lobes will be more or less spared. So this is typical of COVID pneumonia. If you don't see this, you should consider other causes. Now, before you dismiss COVID altogether, you should be aware that in rare cases, COVID can also trigger pulmonary embolism or myocarditis. In that case, you may see still the typical signs of COVID pneumonia, but this will be either disproportionate to the level of respiratory failure that you are observing, or you will see some additional signs, perhaps signs of pulmonary edema in the case of acute heart failure, right? The second point I would like to make is that COVID pneumonia needs time to develop. So signs of respiratory failure will typically appear after five, seven, or even more days of milder symptoms. So it will not start abruptly. So if you have a patient with pneumonia that started all of a sudden, you should consider other causes like influenza or bacterial pneumonia, for example. The third point is patients with COVID are not septic. By septic, I mean they don't show signs of acute organ dysfunction, except, of course, respiratory failure. Now, of course, if they fail to improve after many days or perhaps even weeks, then you can expect acute kidney failure, hypotension and all of that. So basically viral sepsis. But remember that this is a very late occurrence. It happens only in the most severe forms of COVID. So if you have a patient who suddenly became ill and they are septic and they test positive for COVID, you should look for other explanations. You should look for bacterial sepsis or some other explanation for this rapid deterioration. Now let's take a look at the labs. In COVID, you will typically find a normal absolute leukocyte count, maybe with lymphopenia and maybe mild thrombocytopenia. This is quite similar to influenza actually. 
Leukocytosis with neutrophilia is very rare. Again, except in the most severe cases with severe respiratory failure, but even then, leukocytosis is typically not that high. Procalcitonin is usually normal, either completely normal or maybe slightly elevated, again, in the most severe cases. So people on mechanical ventilators might have procalcitonin in the range of 0.5 to 1. CRP also, it's usually not that impressive. In uncomplicated COVID, it could be 10, 20, maybe 30. In mild COVID pneumonia, 40, 30, something like that. Only in people who end up in the ICU on mechanical ventilators, it may reach 100 or higher than that. But this is really exceptional. Again, only in the most severe cases. Every diagnostic test is just another puzzle that you need to fit into the big picture. If something doesn't fit, listen to your intuition and look for another explanation. Dig further. Don't fall victim to premature closure. And please send this video to your colleagues, to students. This winter will be rough and I believe this lecture will help them prepare for it. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.